Hey guys, your friend Iggy back again with Dragon Blogger. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to build a gaming PC. A gaming PC can do anything a workstation can do, anything a desktop can do, anything and everything can do. A gaming PC is a hardcore PC. Uh, I'm going to build it inside of the Cougar Panzer case using the EVGA Z270 FTW motherboard with the Core i7 7700K processor with the 280 CLC liquid cooling unit from our friends at EVGA and the HyperX Predator 3333 MHz RAM DDR4 of course with Windows 10 Professional and of course I am going to be using the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition video card so it's going to be an awesome PC but anyway Come over here real quick and I'll uh, show you what I do. Here is the Intel Core i7 7700K processor, or at least the box. This is the processor itself. So you can see that a little bit. There you go. We're going to go ahead and install it into the EVGA Z270 FTW K board into the 1151 socket. So first off, what we need to do is Take that off. That little cover, this guy right here, protects those pins from being touched. If you ch touch them and bend them, you will void your warranty 100%. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. Now, in order for us to get that CPU in there, we need to push down on this little lever, and then pull away, and then that's it. Okay, so it's unlocked now, so we just slide it back. Okay, and that removes this little tray here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this guy in there. Don't touch the bottom. Try your hardest not to touch the bottom of this CPU. You're going to notice the CPU itself has a notch right here and a notch right here. That notch lines up right here and right here on the 1151 socket. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lightly drop the CPU into the socket. Okay, you see how that aligns right over here and right over here. And you could rub it a little bit. It's good in there. And now just push this little tray down. Make sure it goes under this little bolt right here. Slides right under. And then push this down. Pull it away, push it down a little bit more, and let it slide right into place. And that's it. You've installed the Core i7-7700K processor into the 1151 socket on the EVGA Z270 FTW keyboard. Easy enough. Now, of course, the next thing we need to do is install RAM onto this board. So the RAM we're going to use is the HyperX Predator DDR4 3333 MHz. 2x8 gig dims. You see right here, this is dim 1, dim 2, dim 3, and dim 4. The slot at least. Okay, so we're going to pull this one down. Actually, you install them if you only have two sticks of RAM like we do here, and then over here. Now we've undone these. Over here, you don't have to. They have a, a little tiny notch there to make it easy for you to slide in some memory. So I'm just going to take the RAM out of these little protector here. And like we didn't do before, don't touch those gold pins. Those gold pins, the grease from your fingertips, can potentially either damage the memory or not allow it to conduct the electricity or the signals correctly. So there's two ways you can install this. The incorrect way or the correct way. Let me put it in a better angle so you can see exactly how I do it. All right, so let's start off by doing it the incorrect way. Notice this little notch right over here on the memory and this little notch down here on the dim slot. So first off, I'm just gonna slide it in here. Okay, and now I'm gonna push down lightly. Hey, doesn't doesn't go anywhere, it seesaws there. Well, that's because that little notch is put there so that you don't install it incorrectly. So we're just going to turn it around. Okay, and now 
slide it into the portion that you unlocked over here and then push it down over here on the left lightly you don't need to push very hard that's it it's in there so now we have one more dim okay and slide it in to the right and then into the left that's it you've just installed 16 gigs of ram this was 8 gigs and this one back here was 8 gigs as well all right so that's simple enough instructions on how to install the hyperx predator ddr4 3333 megahertz or 3333 megahertz the 2x8 kit right over here so now let's move on to actually installing the motherboard into the case. Before we can install the motherboard, we first have to install the I.O. shield. All right, the I.O. shield is the part on the back of the case where you plug in all your audio ports, the reset on this particular board, the display ports, display and HDMI, USB ports, and the Ethernet ports. That's going to go, of course, right back here. So what we need to do is First off, make sure the audio ports are on the bottom, at least on this particular case. And now, once it's aligned, just push it in, and let me show you over here. So the edge of the case around this, if you see these little bubbles, let's say, those three little bubbles, and then they're all right there as well those latch in between here and the case holding it in place so again i'm just going to make sure that it slides in there okay and now you have to use a little force here you just have to pop it through just push it through and that's it pretty simple sometimes it's a little bit difficult but usually it's pretty simple so now next what we need to do is make sure that every single little screw hole like this one here, 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 they all match up with the standoffs on the case. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten just counting again to be sure okay so now okay so there is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so counting is easy enough so now what you want to make sure you do is when you install this inside of the case, make sure that you screw in 10 screws. Okay, so just gonna go ahead and lay the motherboard in there, just like that. Nothing matching up just yet. Okay, and now we just make everything line up. Some people prefer to build it standing up. Some, most people prefer to build it laying down. It's a lot easier for me to show you standing up. Okay, and then when you screw them in, just screw them in very lightly. If you're forcing them in, then you're doing something wrong. Just unscrew it screw it back in lightly and you don't want to push you don't want to seal it all the way with extreme force because there's a chance you can mess up the motherboard so on the building it standing up versus building it laying down it is a lot easier to build it laying down, of course. But I do it this way just so that I can show you a little bit easier.
Okay, so now you don't, the motherboard brings this little IO cover here. That goes right back here. You don't need to install it, but if you want to, I'll show you how to do that. In order to do that, first unscrew this screw right here. And the top one, the top left hand corner one. Now the reason why I did that is because right here and right here, that's where actually those screws go. In order to do that, you need to screw in right here and right here. And that's why I took those off. But I'm also going to need to take off this fan back here. So let me do that real quick for you. Right, now that that's gone, we'll go ahead and place that in there. And the reason I took off that fan is this little heat shield here gets in the way and doesn't let you put it in place. But you can put the fan back in afterwards. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and put the fan back on. And I'm going to slip this guy right through up here, that little hole there. That's just for better cabling a little bit later on. All right, so now we've just installed the motherboard completely, even with the I.O. cover. One thing to mention about this case, it does not bring any fans in the front. I added those on my own. I just wanted to mention that. We've installed the motherboard, the RAM, and the CPU. So now let's move on to the power supply. I'm gonna bring you down towards the bottom. Turning the case around, we can see down here where you would install the power supply. Now the power supply just slides right in here. And on this particular case, there's a little lip right here that slides in place. Goes right here just to keep everything in place. So now I'm just going to move all of these cables and install the power supply. Okay, we can see right here, there are four little rubber feet. That's to keep the power supply from making a lot of noise, maybe when the fans spin up. We're going to install the power supply with the fans on the bottom. That's why there's a mesh filter here. And so now I'm just going to slide all of the cables. Now, the power supply I have is a semi-modular power supply. But even if it was a fully modular power supply, you want to make sure you slide in all the cables that you're going to need because it's a little bit harder to actually connect everything once the power supply is in. All right, 
So now it's in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this little face plate on there. That little plate is going to make sure that the power supply stays in there. So first you're going to just align the plate with your power supply and just push it in and then screw in the plate first because you're going to screw in the power supply into the plate. Okay, now that the plate's in there, now we screw in the power supply. And that goes ahead and pushes everything in. Now we've installed the power supply, but you can't see it in this case because there is a shroud. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install all of the hard drives and SSDs. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer just to show you the first hard drives. So these are the trays for the hard drives, or the SSDs I should say. You can simply undo them with your fingertips. And first one I'm going to install is the Samsung Evo. When you, this has four little holes for screws that match up with these four little holes. And when you put them in, just line them up here. Make sure that these pieces right here, the SATA power and the SATA data connection are on the back. The back is the part that actually slides into the case. The part with the screw is the front. So now we're gonna go ahead and screw them in. All right, then you just match them up here. And you don't want to screw it in all the way, just that way you can make sure you get all four of the holes. And when you've got all four of them in, just screw them all four in now, all the way. To note, when we go to cable this machine, we are going to have to remove the SSDs. I'm just putting them in there for now so that you can know how to install them. Super simple. Just screw it in. And you're done. Now, I'll do the same with the others, with the other uh, SSD. And for this one, I'm going to use my WD Blue 500 gig SSD. All right, I did that off camera because I've already shown you on one. I don't want to bore you with the second one, but actually there's more. Okay, you can see there's two back here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install my HyperX 250 gig and my Patriot Ignite. They're gonna be the same way I did the ones on the inside. So I'll just fast forward while I do it. Now that we're done there, just slide them in, in here and screw them in by hand. Okay, now we also have two spots right up here. Those are for mechanical hard drives. I'll show you on one and then skip over to the other one. All right, and like we did for the SSD, we're going to align the holes on this tray to the holes on the back of the hard drive. So we're just gonna lay it there. And we can see the holes start lining up one by one. And then we just start screwing them in. And now that we're done with that one, we'll just go ahead and pop it in place. The way I had to do this particular drive, it's a little bit different than the way you would have to do the other mechanical drive up here I had to invert it so that I can get the uh, SATA power and SATA data cable to come in correctly and I also had to remove the thumb screw and put in a regular screw so that it wouldn't hit the SATA data cable 
and then the top one we can put in normally and again same way I did for the SSDs and the same way I did for this one except this one will actually be in the right direction all right so now we'll just slide it right here and just move these cables out of the way and again we can just use our fingers for this to screw it in the way it's supposed to be on this case is SATA data and power come up here and here as well but that makes things a lot more difficult for cabling so that's why this one is upside down so that everything is right here and I explained it more on the review for the Cougar Panzer case. We're gonna go ahead and install the the video card. Now in most cases you would just come inside the case unscrew these two screws and take out these two IO covers but in this case it's a little bit different. You have to unscrew these guys and let me zoom out. You have to unscrew here and unscrew here to be able to take this housing out so that you actually have access to the screws which are on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and just open that up. And I'm going to put my finger here just so that it won't fall out. So that the, the cover doesn't fall out, not my finger. <laughs> Alright, so I'll take that out of here. And since we know that the video card is going to cover the second and the third slot we're going to take out the second and third slot we're going to leave the top one because that's for a PCIe by 4 connection or card so then we come over here it's okay if it fell and then we take off the third one okay now we just take these out Keep them for safekeeping for later. And then here we have the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. So I'm going to show you real quick how to install that. So then we just grab the card and align it right over here with right down here. And then also, of course, to the PCIe slot, right back there, and just push it in. All right, you don't have to push incredibly hard. Put, push lightly, and it will go in. Now, if you want to take this card out, you, there's a little uh, lock right over here. You push that down, and you gently pull the card out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you get a better idea of how it's done. So here you have your PCIe slot. Now we'll just grab the video card. Again, we're going to align right over here. And then of course we align the PCIe slot. And then now you're going to notice that little lock I showed you pop up. So look carefully. Okay. So that locks that does a little to lock in the card in place. So now all we need to do is screw the card in right over here, right here. And I'll zoom out so you can see it. As I mentioned, you're going to screw it in on the outside. You might have to lift the card for that. So now that's the only... Uh, PCIe device we have so we could just put this back in place the little cover and then the bottom one all right and that's it so you've just installed the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition card. Now, of course, we have to do the cabling, but we'll get to that in one second. Now we're going to install the EVGA closed loop CPU cooler, the 280. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and plug in the 8-pin CPU power. The reason we're going to do that is it's going to hang a little low here, 
and it's gonna make plugging this guy in very difficult. So I've already fed across the cable here. So now we're just going to connect it. Okay, the latch is on the top, so perfect. Now we just go ahead, plug that in here and right here. Okay, and that is what provides power to the CPU. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lie the case down just to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay, so depending on the type of motherboard and the type of chipset, if anything, that you're going to be installing the EVGA closed loop CPU cooler onto, you'll need either this backplate. This backplate is compatible with 1150, 1155, 1366, and 1151. The reason it's compatible with all of those is you can just move this up and down and that's going to go on the back of the motherboard. Okay, if you had an AMD, you'd use one of these along the front because the AMD motherboards, they already have the mounting mechanism already on there. The socket, for example, 1366, socket 2011 and 2011 V3, since they are basically server motherboards, they already have the mounting mechanisms already built into the motherboard, but this is socket 1151 and it doesn't, so we're gonna have to go around the back of the motherboard, right here. Okay, and you'll see a hole right here, 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 and here, and that's where these guys are going to go, so you might have to move this up and down depending on how it comes from the factory, but right here, it just slips right in. Pretty simple. So now you just turn it around. And you can't see it too much, but the little holes are sticking out right there. Okay, and now we're going to need to secure that back plate with these. Now again, they, there's going to be three different types. There's going to be one for LGA 11, LGA 11 version 3, and then there's going to be a set for LGA 1150, 51, 55, 1366. And then there's going to be a third set for AMD CPUs, uh, namely AM2, AM3, FM1, FM2, and then one coming up, the FM4. I know that's already out, but uh, you would just need to contact EVGA and they'll send you out a free plate. So just screw it in right here. All right, you see how that's in there? Again, you'll just screw this end into that little socket there. Okay, so now we've installed all four, and I'll zoom in so you can see it. Okay, so you can see one right here, 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 and here. Missed that one there. That's all four of them. So now we're gonna go ahead and lay the case down so that we can install the EVGA closed loop CPU cooler, the actual unit itself. So give me a second. In order for me to fit this liquid cooling unit, the EVGA, closed loop liquid cooling unit onto the top of this case. I'm actually going to have to separate these fans from the radiator and then put the radiator up here in between the mesh. Um, now I could also put it up here in the front. Again, the case comes without fans here. I put those fans there, but I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top. So, I'm just gonna lay it down and I'll be back in one second. All right, so we'll just take this off. And I'll take the front one off too.
just so that I can push this around the front. Again, there are cables here and you don't want to pull them too tightly. So now what I'm going to do is take off the fans from here and let me show you something uh, which at first I thought could not be done and I'll zoom out. Okay, so typically these uh, screws here that hold the fan to the radiator they're just long enough so that the tip screws in. But you see what EVGA did here is maybe they thought ahead. You see there, there's enough space so that I can fit this piece of metal in between the two. So now one thing you do have to be careful with is this eight pin, let me lower that, this eight pin CPU connection, you need to make sure that that doesn't hit here. If you remember, this doesn't have a wall here, so these fins could hit. So you have to be very careful. Again, I'm just going to take off all eight of these screws. So I'll be back in one second. fitting the fan right through the third hole here or not the fan I'm sorry the uh, cold plate In order to do that, I'm actually going to have to take the motherboard out and let me show you why. You can see right up here, I have those four screwed in just fine. But down here, 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 and here, it's going to be a lot more challenging with the motherboard there in place because then I have the memory in the way and then I have the heat shield over here in the way. But that's not a big deal. All we've really done is install the video card and connect that PCIe 8 pin cable. So we could just take everything out real quick and just screw everything in. So I'm gonna do that real quick and get right back to you. So here is the top of the liquid cooling unit. I'm just gonna go ahead, and put this top back on. All right, you could see it fits perfectly fine. Bring it around the front. And now I can connect the front one as well. Of course, I didn't really do anything to the front, aside from take off the panel. And now I'm going to bring you inside down here so that you can see how we plug in that cooler over here. All right, so you can see here is the CPU, fan here, fan here, nothing's hitting the fan. This cable is coming close, but I'm going to cable it so that it doesn't bug it. And then now we're going to go ahead and put the cooler on there so that it actually looks nice. We're gonna mount it just like that so we can see EVGA. And I am going to use the thermal paste that's on there. It's actually pretty good thermal paste. And so we're just going to lay this flat, as flat as we can right now, okay? See how these guys go right through there? So now I'm going to grab these. Okay, I'm gonna put one here, then one here, and then one here, and then one here. That way the thermal paste is even, and so that it goes on there even. We don't want any gaps. Okay, I'm gonna screw it down lightly with my hands. 
Now I'm going to do this side. Now up here, I'm going to use the screwdriver, but I'm not going to screw it down tightly. Just so I can feel some retention. Just so I can show you, that side is where that screw goes in, and that's where I'm using to screw it in. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in all the way. I'm not gonna screw it with all my might because then you'll break it. These, these fan cable headers that they come with, they attach to this guy on the pump this one says to motherboard so I'm going to connect this to the CPU to the CPU fan header and this says to fans okay so I'm going to connect these guys to where it says two fans Okay, now I'm going to hide these behind these fans here. And then plug this into the CPU fan header. Okay, and I'll do the same here. I'll just tuck in everything here. And this will look nicer in a minute. I'm just uh, trying to do it pretty quick. So this guy is going to shine red, green, blue, whatever color I choose uh, with the EVGA software. Pretty cool. Um, let me go ahead and put that video card back in now. She's starting to look real sexy now with that EVGA cooler there. Um, this up here, pretty much hidden. Definitely with the 1080 Ti Founders Edition. The SSDs on here just give it a little bit of a flare there. Uh, so now we're pretty much left with doing only cabling. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start that out real quick. In the description below, please find the links to all the products in this video.